what is up today we're going to be doing a 215 dollar wsop circuit event uh so we're going to be starting off going over a couple of hands um this was pre-recorded uh, in the future i'm going to have videos of uh live thinking and reaction but i have a lot of content that i recorded that uh i didn't put the webcam over so here easy defend in the small blind with ace deuce and uh we flop trips here it's just an easy call. There's no point in uh, raising. Pretty confident we're good. You know, we're just kind of not calling too quickly just so we could keep his bluffs in. And he bets out again. Yeah, I think uh, shoving is decent just because, you know, if he has something like a smaller pair, um, he could pretty much commit himself. Even, uh, you know, like pocket sevens or something could possibly go all in, but he had a pure bluff, so I don't think we could have got any more value from him. Uh, this tournament, we were actually uh, playing in the beginning. Uh, we were pretty tilted because we busted out another tournament in a sixth spot, so we ended up uh, getting down to probably like the last position was like 300 out of like 330 and uh, I ended up kind of coming back from that before um, I started recording here. I think uh, this ends up being big, like 16,000 for first when everything is said and done. So definitely a decent prize pool. No bracelet with it though, unfortunately. I don't know, maybe you get something with these circuit events. I'm not really sure. All right. So here we have pocket eights. We call 2x open. So he C bets. Uh, paired board is actually really good for the pre-flop aggressor to uh, continuation bet on. And uh, with our hand specifically, I think it's good enough to call. The problem is, is when this guy calls, you know, puts us in an awkward spot. So here I was kind of worried if he was gonna call. Cause I think uh, he definitely has, a, uh, he has King X in his range. But then when he just, Flat when he just flats, then uh, it's pretty alarming. So we decide to fold here. So we're thinking, like, you know, he might be trapping here with the king. Uh, he could have had a flush draw. We do block flush draw right there. Yeah, it's unfortunate because if I knew if he was going to fold, I probably would have called his bet, or if he wasn't even in the hand. I definitely would have played it a little bit more aggressive, but it kind of uh, messed us up there. The thing is, too, this is a WSOP um, PA only, and um, you'll get to see some of the hands. Uh, players are just really bad here um, compared to some of the other sites I've played on, like Poker Stars or like America's Card Room. So. I think uh, definitely a softer field, and um, I usually cash when I play the tournaments on this site. So, all right, we got a royal flush draw. Now this is going to be a three bet spot. I think uh, I'd go a little bit bigger to like seven big blinds. It doesn't seem like too much of a difference, but um, Kingston actually ends up calling. Just because she calls and it kind of prices him in with most of his holdings. But I think if, uh, if we do 7x, we might kind of uh, get him to fold there for that extra big blind. Yeah, and then he, uh, he leads out here. I mean, one big blind. So when someone bets like one big blind, it's a 20 for, you know something that small I mean it's like 5% pot you have to treat it as if they checked 
ignore the bet um because i know there's a couple strange lines here and another thing like this happens um down the road in different hand and uh and it's just really weird when they do that kind of throws you off but if you treat it like a check especially for that size and five percent just play accordingly yeah so here um after raising him we see that third of the pot giving ourselves our own odds to uh hit a flush and uh he folds so we're actually doing pretty good here about 300 players we are 123 and uh, as, as soon as we get closer to the money i will have uh the pay ladders over here yeah so i'm defending nine jack off here in the small blind check the flop nothing really else to do that's the thing too with limp pots um you could definitely like lead out but because i was out of position um i didn't on the flop but as soon as it checks through i'm pretty confident that my nine is good so that's why i pretty much bet small i could get value from a lot of hard draws and here i actually do a, the one chip bet um this is more of a curious uh curious line for the opponent and uh we could definitely get some value from 5x maybe a couple of worse nines as well i think uh ace would have definitely bet the flop especially in a limp pot so yeah eight five so a little bit of value right there i think uh every chip matters you know that one big blind down the road could mean uh, a lot so this is actually a crazy hand right here um I end up limping here. I'm really not a fan of this now. Looking back at it, um, on this website too, you see a lot of multi-way pots, and um, what I figured was like nine ten is really good multi-way, and uh, even if we don't improve too much, then we kind of take advantage. So when this guy raised to six, I figured that would be something I would do in his spot as a squeeze play. So I figured uh, once this guy calls, that we're actually getting a decent price. Uh, we're getting about three and a half to one here, meaning we have to call 2,000 more to win about 6,800 chips. And uh, 910 suited plays really well. And um, it's actually like the Aces cracker. I think uh, mathematically, I think 6-5 suited is the best hand against Aces. But 910 is up there as well. So here we uh, flop an open under. He bets 15. So right now, what I'm putting him on is aces, kings, ace, queen. Um, definitely like a diamond draw. When this guy calls, um, you know, he could definitely have like two pair. He could have a queen himself, uh, queen jack. And uh, this is kind of where the hand gets uh, pretty crazy, and this is where the title comes from. So, once this guy calls, I'm just like, all right, like, this is a crazy hand. I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, two of them have the flush draw. They're kind of blocking each other's outs. This guy has an overpair, um, and we're doing really good. I mean, here, uh, this is like on the flop, like when he calls the flop here, of course, when we turn the, the straight... Um, this is the nuts right now. I mean, there's no hand that beats us. We're only chopping against other nine tens, and with that, we have the redraw to the uber nuts. You know, the straight flush draw. So we just need a queen of spade or a seven of spade, and uh, we have the second best hand in poker. So when this guy shoves, I think he's just overvaluing a lot of his over pairs, unless he has like ace king of diamonds. You know, maybe uh, ace king of spades, but very unlikely. And, uh, yeah. So this guy actually had to end up having an ace-queen. He had two pair on the flop. He had a uh, jack pair with a flush draw. And uh, we're going to hit that rewind button real quick and just uh, take a moment to appreciate this hand because uh, it's pretty crazy. It's actually got us into first out of 298. And uh, 
This was a pretty sick spot. All right, so I'm gonna pause it here. Yeah, so this guy has top top. He he just overvalued man. Like I don't realize. Like I don't understand how <clears throat> him raising to six. Okay, it makes sense. Him betting on the flop fifteen. Sure, right. But when you have call, 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 like, you yeah, definitely don't have the best hand anymore. You know, there's sets of fours, sets of jacks. Um, you know, I wouldn't ever put anyone on four queen, but, like, this guy limping four queen suited and then calling a six big blind raise. Like, this is crazy. You know, he deserved to lose. He should have never been in the pot. This guy has a more reasonable hand, so by you know when he calls and I call, he's definitely getting good odds. And I think out of everyone, this guy got it in the worst. Like uh, he got it in the best, but got the worst like result end of it, you know, because you know he flops a flush draw with a pair. Like he saw, you can't go anywhere. Turns to pair with a flush draw, and he was actually the only one that had real equity against us. Um, I think on the turn here I had about 60 percent he was drawing dead <laughs> um he had seven percent so he can make a boat with the queen or a four and uh he can make a boat with a jack or an eight or just make a flush so i think he had like 15 percent so he had the most equity and his line makes the most sense this guy i don't know what he was doing and then this guy just overvaluing so that was a uh, that was a pretty wild hand, you know, just uh, take a moment to appreciate that. The funny thing is, like I said, I was really tilted in the beginning. I was just kind of uh, donking off my chips and, you know, I was doing like crazy stupid bluffs, you know, like raising, you know, 10x and then they'd like re-raise me and I'd just be jamming and I ended up being the last place and uh, I was just on tilt. So then after that, I said, you know what, like, let me just start actually playing. And uh, I ended up again back from literally being last place in chips to uh, to first place here. So that was kind of nice. Here, 19 big blind shove. We are just going to call. Oh, we don't call. Okay, yeah. So this guy right here is behind. So I was worried uh, if we call, he shoves. And if we shove, he calls. So that was actually a good outcome. We folded nines. They both had ace 10, spike a 10. So I think if I would have shoved here, and he probably would have folded here as ace 10, but he would have folded and we would have lost 20 big blinds to this guy anyway. And of course, if he calls or read jams with ace 10, somehow then we lose 40 big blinds. So there's a couple spots in this tournament, so I remember. Um, I made some very questionable plays as you will see so this is pretty interesting with the jack four if i'm uh recording the hand that means uh you know we end up playing it some things end up happening so flush draw we're gonna check to him play in flow no reason to raise to i mean if he has like strong ace king two pair whatever he has uh, he's not gonna it's not gonna fold but here we'll make the flush. We're going to lead out. The thing is, too, is uh, you have to be balanced. So, like, we have to also make the same play with, like, a queen of hearts. Like, if we have a uh, ten queen with a queen of hearts, I think I'd do the same exact bet to try to wreck the flush as well. Um, so that's the thing. Sometimes, like, if you take certain lines, too, I think you have to be balanced. Uh, but it depends, too. Like... There's some tournaments where you're playing and the players really don't pay attention and then there's some where they will note certain things. So especially online, you know, like for example, when you when you do live, right, like you can do certain things most people will pick up on, but by the time they pick up on it, you've been doing it for a really long time, you can get away with a lot of it. But if you're talking about an online tournament where people can note things, then uh, they definitely will. So once we raise the flop here, we're going to continuation bet. I think if we check, it would be more indicator that we have a 10. 
and actually just betting because one like it's like all right what are we raising with now the 10 excuse um, me boss you have two tens message. on the board so it's less likely we have a 10 and there is the pay so we have fourteen thousand dollars up top ace jack versus ace queen and uh yeah you suck out on them so um we were actually running pretty hot in this tournament early on like uh that four-way all-in was crazy ace queen versus ace jack get on him we're making our flushes we're on top of the world right now ace eight from under the gun plus two we're definitely gonna be opening a lot more. I think this is definitely a candidate to open. There's not really too many small stacks, but the guy right here next to me on my left, you know, could definitely be jamming. So that's really the only thing I have to worry about is opening too light and him catching on and he'll start jamming later. But like I said, I really don't think these players are that good to, uh, or at least in this table at the time I felt where they're, you know, making those decisions and those thought process. So, I mean, even right here, like, we're really far away from the money, so it's not like, you know, there's uh, anything. Yep, so continuation bet, one-third pot. We're going to be doing this with all of our ace holdings, but also any other holdings. Um, and we see that here with like, you know, King Jack, Jack 10, just a, a lot of holdings. So we're going to keep getting value. Um, there's definitely a lot of flush draws in his range. There's a couple. Of combinations of worse aces like uh, ace five, ace six, we lose to now. Yeah, we pretty much lose to you know, ace nine plus, and we're chopping with a lot of the lower aces now. So I ended up checking back, and uh, yeah, so we end up chopping here. Yeah, I mean, the only real hand. I think I could get value from it's probably like ace five, ace four, and even then, that's the only ace that we're not chopping with, like with just the run out. I don't know if uh, we're good often enough there. Oh yeah, Oof. I remember this hand. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty entertaining. I started getting creative let's say so we're three bet with the six queen off do not try this at home kits but you could try it at your local home game and I figured we could just take it down I did not want to call and uh, whenever he does call we're doing kind of the same exact line when we have the ace bet a third of the pot and that's the thing too is you know you got to kind of stay balanced like he saw we, we bet a third with the ace um last hand same guy now we're doing the same exact thing so three comes we're gonna have to keep barreling or you know usually my stance is like we could barrel twice give up on most rivers <coughs> The problem is, is a lot of times if somebody calls the the churn, if uh, nothing really changes, most likely they're gonna call the river as well. So I was looking more of the stairs card. Boss, you have a text message. So when he calls here, um, I think all in is our only uh, our only option. You know, unless he has a really strong ace. I think he has to fold a lot of things. We are not really scared of a, a four for the straight. There's not really too many fours he should have. There's not fours in our range either, so he's not really going to put us on that. But yeah, this site is just different, you know. He called us on the flop with pair of fours. 
call this on the turn, pair of fours, and then reverse the, the straight. So, I mean, this is kind of what I'm talking about here. Um, one, it was unnecessarily losing those chips. I could have definitely just folded pre-flop, or, um, and that would have been it. You know, you wouldn't have seen the sand. But I wanted to be honest and also put in, you know, some bad plays as well. I'm human, you know, I don't claim to be perfect. And, um, yeah, I mean, this hand plays for itself. You know, I raise, he jams, I call. He has king, so we can't really do nothing here. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, like, if I was in his shoes, right, I would probably call fours one time on the, on the flop. On the turn... I might fold because at the end of the day, it's like, are your fours really good here that much? Especially, you, you know, you just seen the hand where I showed the, the pair of aces. So here we have pocket eights. We open from, uh, what is that, under the gun, two and a half bigs. I mean, we're still like dominating chips and that's the thing too with this tournament like got pretty crazy um as far as a lot of uh shallow play we end up jamming here i'm thinking most of the time we're flipping against ace king queen but uh we run into kings again and uh we pull a ethan pull a little rampage poker there i mean you know to be honest uh I, I really tend to do the aggressive lines. So uh, here, you know, when he has kings there, um, I mean, there's always a chance he has a better over pair, usually. But I, there's also a lot of chance he has a lot of asex combos. And um, even sometimes he might have both pairs, you know, like pocket sevens, pocket sixes that we dominate. But uh, it really doesn't change anything. I think if I just call there as opposed to raising, we see that flop, we're going to get it in anyway. So we have a flush draw here. Let me just call. I also have the gut shot to the straight with the queen. Well, there you go. We hit our straight and our flush. I wonder which one we need to beat them. Yeah, I kind of have half pot it here. Um, we could definitely get called with some aces, like ace x, king x, ace jack, but no, just didn't have much. So we're down to 155 people. I mean, um, when you look around, like, there's uh, not too many deep people right now. All right, so we have the eight king here. Then we definitely have to check the flop with uh, how many people there are. Once everybody checks, Feeling a little bit better. Call this bet. Usually everyone's just gonna fold. Um, we're gonna be in a good spot, and this board should be hitting us more than the cutoffs range. And uh, yeah, big blind shoves. So it's kind of putting us in the blender here um what i'm thinking here is like all right like what's he shoving really you know there's not really too many combos of two pairs like there's no five eights um three eight five three i mean maybe five three suited if he's really you know kind of out there i mean he wasn't a big blind so that's definitely an option um but more so i'm kind of more worried about like ace eight realistically um but I was just thinking, right, can he shove worse hands for value, meaning really like ace-5, ace-3, ace-8, we lose two, but can he do queen-8, eight, jack-8, eight, 
10 8 suited so you know i was thinking that there's way more worse hands that he's shoving than that's dominated and uh if you actually look at the pot odds we have to call 14 big blinds to win 34 so we're not doing too bad it's like two and a half to one something like that so we need to be right like good here about maybe like 30 percent of the time for this to be a profitable move i mean if this was a bounty tournament i'd probably snap off but definitely have to think about it but i'm leaning more on uh on the call And uh, yeah, I think that's the decision we come out to. And uh, he ends up having eight jack. So this is a spot too. I think a lot of people would fold, but if you really think about hands, um, the way you have to kind of look at it is, whenever you're in a position like that, you have to ask yourself, like, especially all in spots, um, can my opponent? bet with a worse hand meaning like does he think he has a better hand that actually isn't better you know like if you have a flush like can he be doing this with a worse flush and things like that so when you really start thinking about that and thinking about the hands and how you get there with them makes it a little bit easier yeah i think this is a mistake here i think i should just be calling just to realize our equity um if he shoves we're pretty much committed, and that's what ends up happening. Um, two to one. I mean, I don't love it, but I think we just have to call Psy off, you know. Of course, he has an ace. I just hope we hit the equity. So a better play there was just calling the one and a half big blinds, because then the ace comes on the turn. We check, he bets, and uh, he's either going to make it really small, he's going to check back for deception, which gives us a free card, or he can make it too big where we might just fold there. So that was a mistake. This I actually remember. Um, so funny enough, um, I had my friend with me while I was playing this. And um, he's not really a poker player. Like he understands like what hand beats what hand. But he's what you would call maybe a nit. And uh, you know he's here watching with me. And I was thinking about this hand, like I, you know, I was thinking, I was like, oh man, all right, like what hands he's shoving with? You know, there's definitely a lot of middling pairs and stuff. And he was like, bro, this is you. You got to fold here. You got to fold. And um, I literally called this hand just to prove a point where I was like, no, but like he could definitely have pocket eights, pocket nines, pocket tens. Like we're not dominated always. And then uh, I, I literally just called because of that. I mean, stupid reasoning. We had we were in ninth place you know, out of 105 or 109, and uh, it was just a bad call. Now, granted, he could have had all those hands, and yeah, let's say he has Jack Queen, you know, and then we look like a genius, you know. So that's the thing about poker too, you know. Sometimes it's like you go with the move, you look like a madman, you know, or a donkey, and uh, other hands you look like you're brilliant. A lot of it is just timing so we're gonna defend here uh big blind this is like under the gun plus three open now when he checks here um i feel like all right you know he shouldn't really be too strong or definitely could have something like ace king definitely have something like pocket nines so i decide to uh call here and uh put him to the test on the river so i called there with intentions of uh bluffing him because like over pairs are not checking right ace queen's not checking so he definitely has like under pair, you know, maybe something stupid like ace 10, ace 4, you know, um, pocket sixes, ace 10. Yeah, I mean, I don't 
I don't mind the call by him. I think in his spot, I'd lean more on calling just because. Um, I don't know, it's tough, you know? Because, like, if I had, like, let's just say I had King Queen there, he checks the flop. Like, am I always going to bet because he checked? I don't think so. I think I'd be checking sometimes. So I think I could have some trapped queens there. But I think that was a, that was a three barrel. Like, I had to bet the flop, the turn, and the river for me to get that win. Yeah, I think it's kind of the same scenario. Like, I'm thinking uh, I could definitely bluff him. But hands up, uh, he's probably winning himself. Yeah, I mean, I thought that uh, when I called there on the on the flop and the turn, I think this is more of a player specific. Um, and that's the thing too. Like a lot of these tournaments, I'm paying attention to what these guys are doing. Um, it's easy all in here. So there's about 35 people left. So we are in the money at this point. I think we got like it's a $215 buy-in, so I think we locked up like maybe $300, something like that. But as you know, most of the money's up top. And uh, yeah, he calls a nine eight and we lose. So we got thirty fifth place out of four hundred thirty five hundred dollar win, about three hundred dollar profit. I think if you actually see here, like this is ninety people, all right, and then you go here and we're at fifty. Then it's already down to 35. So I actually remember um, why I kind of skipped through a lot of this. Um, after a couple of those hands, like after this hand, like, you know, I was down to uh, 20 bigs here with 90 people left. And basically that kind of put me on uh, life support. So I was really just finding spots, shoving, getting it through, blinds going up, shoving. And literally from there to here... Like, I was pretty much just, uh, just shoving and playing um, what I could. When I came back here and I won this pot, I had the 31 big blinds. This is where I basically, for once, had a decent stack. But I really didn't end up getting too many hands and uh, folded a lot. And that's the thing, too. I don't need freaking aces and kings to play, as you guys see. I just need some, you know, something that's connected, something that's suited, um, and preferably closer together, you know. This shove here, um, we're in the big blind. I mean, we have 16 bigs, you know. Uh, I, I really don't see how we could just call here. Because so we're going to miss the flop a lot of the times, but we can also uh, get a lot of his worst hands um, to call, which ends up happening with 9-8. So even though the outcome was terrible, like, you know, if we run this situation 100 times, I'm going to win 60 of those times. So um, we got him to call with the worst hand. You know, he definitely could have called, if he's going to call with 9-8, he could have called with, you know, East 9. So the funny thing is, is before this tournament started, I was playing on America's Card Room. And um, same thing, I'll be posting that pretty soon, but... I went all in with, with the same amount of big blinds. I think I had like 14 big blinds or something. And I had ace jack. The guy calls with ace nine. So it was even worse than this. And um, he ends up making a straight. Like it was the worst way to lose. And um, I was kind of uh, on tilt when this happened. And then, you know, ironically enough, that's how the tournament ends. And, and, and like, I was looking at the spot, you know, like this is 35 bigs. If we actually win this, like 35 bigs doesn't seem like a lot. But I mean, if you look at, Everyone else, like 12, 22, 19, this actually puts us in the top 10 stacks. And this pretty much, like, this pot would have guaranteed us the final table. Like, for sure. Especially, like, how I was playing. Um, I, this was definitely the final table moment. But either way, we're happy to take a win. 
Uh, appreciate it. You know, if you guys liked the video, please comment, like, and subscribe. Um, like I said, I just have a lot of footage of uh, tournaments that I recorded. Um, I think I played this like about a month ago or something like that. But um, whenever I end up, you know, having the newer stuff come out, like I have probably like another 10 tournaments that I recorded that I'm going to be going over. After that, then this is going to be all like live thinking, thought process, and playing. I'm just recording over all these other videos just because uh, I did not webcam them. I just screen recorded them. So besides that, thank you guys for watching, and uh, stay tuned to Kings Up.